Kia ora, my name is Eden and I am coming to you from the beautiful Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm here to talk to you about how I became a freelance dive writer as a part of the Girls That Scuba Careers Month. So I started diving in my early 20s after growing up with a family of divers and sailors. The ocean was always a part of my life and I finally got around to getting my Paddy Open Water Certificate when I was about 23. I loved learning to dive. I learned in Thailand and I just loved the colour and the beautiful fish and the coral reef. Everything about it just trapped me into the diving world. So when I came home I wanted to further my study in diving and I did my advanced open water course and my rescue diver course. I loved diving in Wellington. It was a lot cooler but the topography we had was incredible and the world was different again and to me Seeing that diversity in dive sites was what made me go, how come more people don't get to see it? So I started telling everyone I could about it. And that is kind of where my life as a dive writer started. So I started writing little bits and pieces uh, about my dive trips. I always kept really thorough dive logs as well, uh, where most people stop writing their dive logs after a few dives, though you shouldn't. Um, I continued to write mine and I always wrote them in quite great detail. I was inspired to do this actually because my parents both did it. As divers, we have all of their dive logs. I think they have at least 500 dives each and their dive logs are incredible to go back and read. So I always wanted to be able to go back and read my own dives as well. So when one day I turned to my partner and said I wanted to do my dive master course, he was like, great, let's go and we went to Mexico and that's where I became a dive master. He was already an instructor so that was very helpful and I spent 10 weeks doing a dive master internship with a shop in Playa del Carmen where I had just the most amazing time. We did incredible dives, we had an incredibly fun group of people around us and they were supportive. I loved it, I loved every second of it and could not recommend it more highly. Whilst I was over there, I, like many people, posted photos and stories of my trip to my Instagram. Um, now, I by no means have any kind of special social media accounts, pretty much just my mum and my nana follow me. But luckily for me, fortuitously, whatever it was, someone, uh, an agent, saw my post and he quite liked the way that I wrote about my travels and could see that I was dive. Uh, doing my dive master training whilst I was there. So with that he approached me and asked if I would be interested in doing a little bit of a write-up um, and seeing if there was any chance of becoming a dive writer then. So I took the opportunity and I wrote him a 300 word piece of copy uh, about my favourite dive site just to give him a little bit of insight into my personality and my writing style. From there, he got my first article for me, which was writing on my top 10 favorite dive sites from around the world. Uh, very fortunately, before this point, I had actually done quite a bit of diving with my partner. I had gone on dive specific holidays uh, to Indonesia. We had done heaps of diving around New Zealand, um, Southeast Asia, and now Central America as well. So I did have a few dive sites under my belt that I could talk about, not nearly as many then as I do now, um, but it was a really great place to start. So one of the common questions that I got asked in the Q&A was how do you become a dive writer? So that changes a lot depending on who you talk to. Um, it's not a black and white path to follow. It's not like becoming a scuba instructor where there's a course that you go through. It is very varied. So one way to do it is through an agent, write yourself, a uh, portfolio, have a few different articles written up in your style, make sure they're well edited, um, have people check over your grammar and spelling it, the small things really do matter, um, and then just start approaching agents and sending in a portfolio of yourself. It's like a CV, but a large part of that needs to be articles. Um, otherwise, you can work for yourself, in which case you do the same thing, but you approach magazines directly. Make sure though that you specify that they cannot use your content without prior permission and if they want to use your content they should be paying you for it. There is no world in which these places get given free content. If anyone is saying, oh, give us your first article for free, 
will work from you will work with you from then on that's not the done thing um there may be a few people out there that do it but i promise you any good publication will pay you it won't be a lot to start with but there should be some form of payment for the content that you write never undervalue yourself in that regard so for me this agent approached me and he helped me form a lot of connections around um the writing world uh, many of them are for online publications to start with they're often a little bit smaller have a slightly smaller outreach um, but they're a really really good place to start i also write for magazines most kind of print media i do a lot of in-flight magazine work and um, a little bit of blog work as well for people's different people's blogs there'll be a guest blogger for the day i do not have my own blog um, because all of the content that I do write, I make money out of it. So to me, it's important that I keep my content um, for my publications. So a few of you may be at, the, at this point, and I probably should have covered this off first, asking what a freelance dive writer actually is. So let's go back a step and tell you that. So a freelance dive writer, I'm going to stop saying freelance because that just means that I work for myself, I work remotely, and I can do it from wherever I am. A dive writer, I write about anything to do with diving. So that could be about a specific dive site or it could be about an entire area. So that might be looking at a place here in New Zealand. Poor Nights is a small group of islands that you can go diving at and there's so many dive sites at the Poor Nights that I could write about that whole area as a, as a generic base. Or I can write about specific sites within that area. I also do, and this one's mostly for the in-flight magazines, um, trip recommendations. So because in-flight magazines tend to align with a specific airline, the airline will say, here are the destinations we fly to, can you create a recommendation for a dive-based trip? So I, for example, may do one for an Indonesian airline where I say you go from Bali to Raja Ampat, the flights, the accommodation, how to get there, what to do at all of the destinations along the way. And I talk and write about all of that, which I really enjoy doing. Um, I also write a little bit about um, how to plan a dive trip and what you should look out for, what to be aware of. Um, that is typically non-sponsored content, so it's not from a specific airline wanting it. It is just for like a blog post or something like that. I do get to write a little bit about specifically the sea creatures. Now I'm not a marine biologist, but um, if I do want to do something like this, I get a lot of help from professionals. Um, but for example, one article I wrote was about swimming with humpback whales in Tonga. Now that's not a scuba specific trip, but it's a you know, snorkel, you might do some diving while you're there, so it's a very easy thing for me to write about, and also 10 out of 10 recommend it doing it if you get the opportunity. So I'm just going to flick through a few of these um, questions that were sent through to the Q&A section, um, and if you have any more questions, please comment below and I will get back to them as soon as I can. Um, so most, some of these I've already kind of answered off, but I'm just going to touch over a few of them again with a bit more detail. So one of them is, do you work for yourself or have an agent? I did start with an agent and I had an agent for years. He still brings me work occasionally, but predominantly now I work by myself. Agents do take a cut of the fee. They earn that cut of the fee as well. I am all for agents. They do great work. As long as you find yourself a good one who has your best interest at heart. Um, a lot of the time agents give you connections and those connections won't work with you unless you go through an agent and it's the relationship they keep but there are also a lot of places who are very happy to work with you directly which means obviously you get all of the um all of the pay to yourself which is a nice perk another question i always get is how do you pitch typically i don't really pitch they'll come to me with an article that they're looking for and then i will go ahead and write about that for example, they may come to me and say they want an article on the top 10 dive sites around the world. It's a really easy example. Sorry, I keep using it. But in which case, I then write personally about what I find as my top 10 dive sites. If they want a factual top 10 dive site, so e.g. the 10 most dive sites around the world, 
I can write that provided I have been to those dive sites. Um, or I will interview someone and write based on their experience. I will never write an article pretending I've been to a place. I think integrity is really important. If I write about things that I haven't done, it's going to come across in the writing. And it means that if I then do go and do it, and I want to write about it later in the future, later down the track, I'm going to have a really hard time making sure that those things align. It's just dishonest if you ask me. I think it's really important to either write from your own perspective or interview someone who has actually done the diving or the trip that they want. Which leads really nicely into this next question, and I think this is what people love to dream about when they think about dive writers. Um, and that is having trips paid for. So the question is, if you go on a trip, do the expenses get paid for by the magazines? Or do I pay for them myself? So when I first started, all of my writing was entirely based on dives I had already done. Um, as I developed a portfolio and got more experience, yes, people did offer to pay for certain things. If, however, they want me to do write about something and I haven't done it yet, I will say I can, but the fee will be higher and uh, charge more so that it covers the cost of doing that trip or they will send me on the trip. Most of them are very close to home um, and they certainly don't pay for everything. They will pay for certain elements of it. Um, it really depends who you're working with. Again, as you gain more experience, the amount they're willing to pay for does go up as you work with them more and have more kind of um, articles under your belt as well. So yes, it can be a fun perk of the job. So the next question is, how much do you get paid? I've seen a lot of freelance writers get paid per word and the rate seems very low. Correct. When you start out, you are typically paid by word. Even now, I'll do articles where I'm paid by word. It is a very common way for publications to pay their writers. There is always a word limit. Obviously, they want you to, um, they have limited space for a start, but also they want you to get your point across typically within a fairly small word limit. That word limit can be slightly negotiable. The amount you get paid per word is definitely negotiable, but when you start out, it is typically pretty low. It can be as low as a few dollars per word, um, and an article as small as three or 400 words, which means that overall the pay isn't huge. However, it's adding to your portfolio, and it's a really good way to start building that relationship and trust with a publication. Always make sure you hit your deadlines with publications too, otherwise you don't, you're not going to be hired again. Um, but in terms of how much you make, that really depends on your experience. So you could, you could live off being a freelance dive writer, um, remembering what you put in is what you get out. So if you're not putting in much work, you are going to make minimal and you probably can't live off that. But if you put in the time to build the relationships, build your portfolio, um, really enhance those connections, then yeah, you can definitely live off it. I would say that you could make anywhere from when you're starting out 500 US dollars a month up to 2000 plus a month. Just a little bit of further clarity on that too, sorry this is kind of coming from that same question, but as I have gotten more experience I now predominantly get paid by article rather than per word. So we will negotiate how long the article is going to be, um, a deadline for it, and a deadline matters because if they want you to pump out an article overnight Obviously that's going to take a, a lot and um, that's going to affect the fee that is charged. Um, where if it's a place you've done before, if it's something new, you've got to take the time to go and do that. There's a lot of factors that come into how much you get paid per article, but nowadays most of my content is paid per article. So this next question is a very relevant question. Has it been difficult to find work during COVID? Yes. So during COVID, I pretty much haven't been writing. Um, I have got an article coming up soon. I'm yet to do the trip though, so that's got to be done first. And that's right here in New Zealand, which I'm very lucky that within New Zealand, we are pretty much free to move around as normal, um, just not in and out of the country. That's a bit tougher. But I am able to write about what's going on here in New Zealand, which means there's a little bit of work available out there, but not a lot. Um, this has definitely had a huge impact on anyone in the travel industry and this is a travel based job so yes, hugely impacted. Um, segue to the next question, do I have another job? Yes I do, which means I'm not too concerned, it's a shame because I love doing it, um, but I do have another full time job that I do. You don't have to have a full time job outside of writing, if you want to just dedicate your life to doing full time writing you absolutely can do so and be successful out of that. 
um, for me I just have many interests in my life and that's why I do both Um, I love this next question. So there's only two more questions to go. This next one is, can anyone be a freelance dive writer? I'm still at school, but love to write and love to dive. So absolutely anyone can do it. And you can even start from a young age. Get yourself started now. If you're still at school, go for it. Um, you can be a dive writer. The key is that you've got good vocabulary um, in your language. If you've got another language, a secondary, third, as many languages as you can, even better. Um, I also speak French. My written French is pretty terrible, um, but it means that my articles are often translated into French for French publications, um, and I just check over them to make sure that they've kept my tone of voice because um, it's really important to me that it's not my content being said from someone else's point of view. Uh, but yes, absolutely go for it, do it, keep diving. The more diving you do, the better you're going to be able to write and keep writing as well. And don't just write about diving, write about as much as you can to keep uh, practicing the skill. Do you also have to supply your own images? Many, many writers do. I would say the majority of writers do their own photography. I, however, do not. I found personally that uh, when I was trying to take photos as well, I was too focused on one particular thing and I kind of missed the whole dive because I was too focused on the photography side of it. As the writer, I'm there to tell the story about the dive and the whole dive experience. So I prefer to be involved in the whole dive and have all of my senses engaged in the entire dive and have someone else doing the photography for me, who's also probably gonna do, no, not probably, who is also definitely going to do a much better job than I will. So I work with a lot of local photographers at dive sites and they will provide the imagery for the, uh, for the magazines or publications um, and they'll I'll just put them in touch and make sure that they provide the right images. So I will always verify images um, to make sure that if I'm talking about the poor nights in New Zealand, someone's not providing uh, putting images of Cozumel next to it because obviously they would look very different. Um, so that's an important part of it. So I hope I have provided a little bit of insight into the world of being a dive writer. Thank you all very much for listening. Um, if you have any more questions, please ask on this post from Girls at Scuba or jump over to my Instagram page. It's E under the C. Um, I'm sure there'll be a link or something here somewhere and you can ask me directly there. But thank you very much. Have a fabulous day and keep blowing bubbles.